Welcome, welcome to the podcast yet again with myself, Lethal Coils, Matt Sinister, and Chaos Pixie. Hello. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing. We're doing. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I kind of <laughs> share the same sentiment this week. Um, it's been a real, well, this week. I say this week, but it's been two weeks because uh, we didn't actually record last week. We've been, we've yeah, been gone. We had to. Been off, we were off for a week because uh, health issues. Uh, you both had uh, you both had uh, so, uh, a form of surgery. Yep, yep. We both we were out of commission during our normal recording time, so uh, we decided to take that week and and uh, use it for recovery. And now we're back with all of us. Uh, we're doing well. Pixie, how's uh, how's your your surgical procedure? Sp- Sight healing. Fine. Fine. How are you feeling with it? Sore. Sore. Still. <laughs> like, there was you had dental surgery, didn't you? Yeah, yeah she had, had oral surgery. Two extractions, but they're right in the front of my face. And I, my, my I'm not going to say so oral surgery because that just sounds wrong. So, <laughs> I mean, um, we'll just say dental surgery. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my my jaw is so small that the teeth are cramped anyway. So to take two teeth right out of the front of my face. Was uh, I'm still if I don't keep pumping down the ibuprofen like on time, it all starts to re-swell again. But that's kind of to be expected. I've had I've had teeth pulled and uh, uh, root canals, so I, I understand. Mm. I've never had a root canal. I have had extractions. Um, I was much dumber in my younger years and didn't take care of myself, and so I had several extractions and now i have no molars no no actual chewing teeth no functional chewing teeth um so you gotta chew like an old lady with the front of your teeth yeah with like my canines forward Mm -hmm. it sucks either that or i gotta put in my my partials my partials (laughs) i'm like yeah damn they don't don't feel right though do they no 35 years old and i was wearing partial dentures i was are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't hardly that's what, that's what That's what my grandfather used to say every time we'd get him new false teeth. Like, that, they don't feel right. So he learned how to gum a steak. You know I mean? yeah. yeah. You could learn how to do that. I, I see it. Um, me, personally, I'm doing better, too. We've, uh, I've had, oh, yeah, it was, what's today, Tuesday? So it's almost been a week since my procedure. And uh, I, I'm still a little sore. I'm still getting there, but uh, overall, I'm doing much better than I, I was the first day, of course. Well, when you're getting a three-inch needle stuck in your spine, you know, it doesn't feel too good. You know? No, it really doesn't. It really, really doesn't. And, and I've uh, had that done probably about ten times, so. Oh, yeah, I've been through it about five already. Um, I had, actually, I've been through it four. One of my procedures before wasn't actually an injection. It was what we call an RFA, or radio frequency ablation. Where they, yeah, I've had that too. Yeah, basically the same thing, but instead of like them injecting something in, the needle has a big diode or a little diode on the end of it that actually heats up and singes the nerve endings around the Burns area. the nerves out. That yep. hurts like a son of a bitch. Yep, that's why I was out for it. <laughs> you know, because I've only had that done twice. Oof. Oh, is that all? All twice? That's it? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's the one they have to <laughs> once have is like... bad en- Once is bad enough. But, yeah. Um. Yeah, but... Uh, it didn't. T- it didn't really take though. It lasted maybe a week. Yeah, yeah. Mine didn't you take know. either. And uh, what I didn't realize is they don't actually use that as a form of treatment for um, for degenerative disc disease. That's actually a treatment that's designed for a different ailment. But I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, but I guess it it works for some people, which is cool. But it they depends the where the cent- the center of their pain is, and a lot of times they'll burn the nerves out in an area that, you know, they're they're kind of guessing when they do this. Yeah. You know, they're just like, okay, because there's so many nerve endings, and there's so many, you know, all, throughout your whole body. Right. And, uh, and particularly on your back, you know, they're they're just kind of okay. Maybe we go here and here, and they kind of do little tests on you, and uh, to see where it hurts and. You know, sometimes right. it, it'll work for a short time, but a lot of times the nerves will just regenerate. Right. And that's like, that's one of those procedures that they need you half awake for. Um, oh, yeah. You know, you need to, because in the middle of it all, 
you have they'll ask you a question that you have to answer like can mm. you feel this is this in the right spot and yeah when you're half out like i was all you can do is going ah, ah. also you're it hurts yeah it, it does. hurts so it, you're like you're like going ah, yeah that's good yeah. when you had it done did you feel a vibration down your spine and your legs Oh, dude! Uh-huh. Oh, I hate that feeling. Not just my le- not just my legs, but everything below my my uh, waist. <laughs> I'm not joking. That did here. happen. Yeah. Um. So yeah, guys, why don't we go over what we're vaping on real quick? Uh, I know we don't we don't do this quickly, but we will do this today. Well, um, I'm doing it quickly. Oh, go ahead, Matt. What do you got? Because I only got two things. Okay. Two things. I got the, uh, I got my, uh, you know, sub ohm tank that I uh, take with me on when I go when I go out. You know, it's the uh, 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 Raptor, um, and it's on top of the Viso and E mask with some uh, uh, sour gummy on the inside. Um, and what's interesting is this is also my lazy vape. You know, where I'm just laying around watching TV. I don't want to drip. I don't want to, you know, deal with anything. I just, like, I just watch TV and just vape away. Right. Um, and then I got the uh, the clutch with the Turk V2 on top. Breeze Tones 26 is on the inside with some uh, uh, basic bitch from the Hoguts Yogurts uh, line. That's that uh, yes. pumpkin. pumpkin spice cheesecake. Yo. It is very good. It is very good. It really is. I need to pick up some more of that. That's well, I'm waiting for the stimulus it. check. When I get the stimulus check, I'm going to spend a few hundred bucks on liquids and get a good supply of liquid in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. Pixie. So we'll be getting that by next week or the following week. Is that when we're supposed to get them? Went to went, Biden. It went on Biden's desk. Uh, it's either going today or it went. To, it's going tomorrow. But he'll sign it immediately. And, uh, oh yeah, yeah. He's a big yeah. advocate for that. All right, yeah. Cool. Well, it's his bill. It's really his bill. You right. Know? Right. Um, and uh, he was actually asked a few days ago at a press conference, uh, "When are you going to sign the uh, the uh, stimulus bill?" And he said, "When well, they send it to me." You know? so, yeah. <clears throat> Like uh, people seem to not understand sometimes what the actual powers of the president are. Like, you know, he can't just point his finger and say, "Do this, I command." You know, it right. doesn't work that way. You do it with the military, but he can't. But you know, he's got a lot of people there going, oh, "Mr. President, maybe we should take a step back here." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Pixie, what are you vaping on? Same shit. Same shit. <clears throat> Same shit. Same it doesn't really change up much. I've got the mini Asgard on top of the Dreamer, and I'm running a homebrew um, fruits and cream. When I was making that Betty clone, I had all the flavors, and I got a little um, rambunctious and just started <laughs> measuring things out and putting them in the uh, bottles. And I actually, I'm pretty proud of how this one came out. It's pretty yummy. I wish. I had added a little more cream to it, but it mellows out. Don't even. <laughs> Both of you. It mellows out the. Did I say anything? Fruit. I didn't say one word. You I didn't, didn't make a have sound. to. They can't see your face, but I saw your face. <laughs> and it was, was the same as him. Because Chris <laughs> smiled. Anyway. <clears throat> That's it. Just the Pachamama and the Dreamer. No, but not the Pachamama, the homebrew. You don't oh. listen. And what you got the Pachamama over here for? Because I was going to vape on that, but I don't want oh. to. Okay. Well, that's fine. Don't want to then. No. Um, so I guess I'm up then. What do we got going on today? I've got the uh, Smoked Out Acrylic Limited Edition Saga by uh, Vapor's Cloud. And I also have the Ardent by Stan, Mr. Tenacious TX Vapes and uh, Times Vape. Got some strawberry quesitos, a cream cheese flaky pastry from our man, the Batman. Got that three milligrams in there on my own personal lethal coils. And uh, wow, I just said that like Graham Greene. Lethal coils. Anyways, what else we got? Uh, 
Matt, I did have the clutch set up, but I got to tell you, I, I wasn't digging the vape I was getting off of it. So I took the Turek V2 off and I put it on the H Cigar Wild Wolf 235. And uh, I am really digging it now. I don't know what the issue was with my... Uh, could have been your battery. It could have been. It could have been the battery. Because if, the, bat if the battery's sometimes. not working pr properly, it's not gonna, it's, you're not going to get a good vape off it. Because mm. okay. you got to remember, the clutch is a mech. It's a mech. It's yeah. a, it's a it's not a uh, regulated mod. It's just a simple mech. Oh, I know, and I build and, for that reason. And um, sometimes just uh, you know coils can you, like I have put a lot of different eddies on the clutch, and for me the Turk V2 has always been the best. Um, but uh, for example, the RD the RDA for Vapen, um, I'll get some good hits off that for maybe two or three. Um, and then, you know, as soon as that battery life starts to go, you know, and I'm in desperate need for new batteries right now. My batteries are like two years old. Oh. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> they've been rewrapped several times. And right. so, uh, that's probably something else I'm going to do with the stimulus check. Um, but don't get me wrong. I'm going to pay some bills too. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I need to get some new some some coils, and uh, I need to get you know get a good 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 supply of certain liquids to uh, make sure that uh, I have some of those in reserve. Yeah. Um, next up, I am on some other stuff. I've got oh wow, I've got several setups still to go. Now it's my turn for the big buffet. Uh, for the big we've buffet. Got the unicorn. Let's try that one more time. We've got the be, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> the Unicorn Vert mod with the OG recoil and uh, custom low low pro drip tip on there. Very nice. And uh, in that, we've got some more quesitos, the cream cheese flaky pastry. This one is pineapple in three milligrams. And obviously, of course, again, lethal coils in there. And uh, two more setups that we've got rocking. We've got the Rage. We dug out oh. the old Rage and uh, put the Unicorn um, V2 RDA, the Odium. We put that on top of the, the blacked out Rage here. And we've got some more pineapple quesitos in there as well. We're running low on good juices, so we're using what we have. Um, and then finally, because I have MTL liquids in bulk at the moment and I don't do MTL much, We've got the Squid Industries Double Barrel V3 with the STNG Mouth to Lung RDA from Wotofo. And in that, what we have is the, uh, is it this one? Yeah, this is the one. This is the Sabores del Encanto from Fogging Out with the Batman. This is Canita de Queso, the cream cheese flaky pastry. And that's what I've got rocking tonight. That is it. That's the last of my buffet. Um... Yeah. Wow, what a buffet. Yeah. What um What are we doing tonight? Oh yeah, that's right. We're doing a, a couple of different things. I wanted to bring up a question for you guys actually. One that was brought up to me during a Instagram live stream that I was brought into earlier. Oh no. Uh there was a question in chat that actually was a very, very good question. Um and the question was Who the who, the fucking who. That's what the question was about. It was the who, um, not the, the band, who. the who, the World Health Organization. What are your feelings and your opinions on them trying to intervene in the vape industry? Well, I think we've, we've got some history behind that and clearly they're just, they have their own agenda and they're working with other people that are against vaping. Well, they've changed their tune. They came back and they issued one statement that said, oops, we fucked up. And in my personal opinion, well, actually, let's get it from, from Pixie too. What, what's your opinion on that? I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Well, the World Health Organization, just so you know, uh, she's not up on the advocacy as much as I am, but yeah. World Health Organization has been anti-vape this entire time. Very anti-vape. Now, all of a sudden, they issue a statement saying that they screwed up and that we were wrong. <laughs> well, 
any thoughts. Isn't that no different than what the CDC did? Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. They could well, turn around. They could fly banners from airplanes over every inch of the U.S. right now, saying that vaping is perfectly fine. <clears throat> it's perfectly safe. Science says this. They can say whatever they want now. The problem is, much like a fight with your significant other, the minute that comment that you shouldn't say comes out of your mouth, you can no longer take that back. That is in the other pe- person's head forever. Mm-hmm. So to come out swinging anti-vaping as hard and heavy as a lot of these people have, it doesn't matter how, how much science proves against it. Until they get just as aggressive with their apologies... And with the approval and the scientific facts, the damage is as good as done. And I I feel the same way. Uh, And that was kind of my answer when this question was posed to me, was what is my opinion on the the who getting, um, intervening in the vape industry? And my honest opinion, guys, is that the who, the CDC, the AHA, the ALA, they have all lied and spread so much misinformation so many times nobody can believe a damn thing they say and the damage has been done and so yeah, it's not like it's not like we're hearing uh you know the uh uh world health organization coming in and saying you know what we uh we 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 made a mistake so uh we're going to intervene and and speak to congress and say how we were wrong about this and the FDA needs to back off with the PMTAs the states need to black off, back off with their flavor bans. We'll see. You know, uh, we need to allow uh, uh, vape mail. You know, I don't see any of these groups that have since come out and said, you know what, we were wrong. That's all they do. They just come out and say, oops, we were wrong, sorry. And yeah, then that, you never hear another thing again from them. You know? Absolutely. And that's where the aggressive apology comes in. Like, if they truly were sorry about the misinformation that they spread, they should step up to the plate and do exactly that, Mm-mm. but they won't. we just found well they won't. We just discovered we we just found out uh, you know it recently that one of the big uh, guy one of the big head honchos that's against vaping, good old Governor Cuomo, <laughs> is uh, you know a sexual predator. You know, so <laughs> which believe me, I've been you know as as wrong as that is, yep. and I'm sure you know his victims aren't laughing about it. No. You know, and I feel terrible for them for what they had to go through. I'm laughing about it because not because of what he did, but the fact that he got caught and, you know, and I am just seeing, you know, just the, you know, did he commit? Is he a sexual predator? Technically, yes. But so what? I could just. Right. See, you know, I could just Absolutely. See, and I've been saying that for. Yeah. Uh, Right. And I'm just like, uh, no, it's not so what in this case, all right? No, no. You know, it's just not. like it wasn't so what in vaping better than smoking. It's not so what. It's these are the facts. Let's yep. look at the facts. Let's look at the medical evidence. Let's look at the scientific Absolutely. evidence. Absolutely. You and know. I um I was watching the news. I, I've been doing this lately where I'll get up, I'll make my coffee, I'll go down to my man cave and I'll I'll turn on YouTube. And I'll watch like news pieces that they did from the night before or that morning. Or sometimes I'll even find a news channel on YouTube that's going live with their news reports. And I'll sit there and I'll watch and I'll, I'll, you know, browse through some of the articles. And one of them was exactly that, was Cuomo. And the double, um, what is it, scandals. The dual scandals that he's facing. First, the, the first scandal we all know about already. He fudged numbers. He made it look like more people died in hospital beds than they were yeah. from the nursing homes. So that's the Not first thing. Also, numbers of who who actually had COVID. Yeah, you yeah. Know, they're, they're, so, they're looking into that right now. It's like, what did they just have the flu? Did they have an already illness that was already going on? Right. You know, right. did they get COVID while they were still in the hospital being treated for these? And they actually died from this, but they're just going to say, well, he had COVID too, so he died of COVID. Yeah. And then the second one is, like you mentioned, sexual harassment. He was brought up, uh, accused by three women 
This was the news report that I had watched uh, maybe three or four days ago. And uh, I watched it, and the news report said that three women had come out and accused Governor Andrew Cuomo of sexual harassment and had gone into some detail about how this had happened. Well, a member from Senate, um, I Supreme something or other, I don't remember exactly the title of the person, but he was uh, informing people that if one more lady, one more person, and I won't say lady, if one more person came out and said that, uh, you know, so, there was right. possible sexual harassment, he was facing resignation. And Good. that that's what I'm hoping happens. That is really what I hope happens. Yeah, guess what? It will. It will. And, but I don't think the guy will resign. The guy's too arrogant. Oh, no. He's they'll take arrogant. him out. You know. They'll yeah, take no, him. he's going to, he'll have to get recalled. Mm-hmm. You know, but yep. I mean, the thing is, is I think he's up for, uh, I think he's up for re-election next, uh, uh, in 2022. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, uh, I mean, he could fight it this whole, that whole time and then decide not to run again. Yeah. But, um, either way, uh, it's, it's one of those things where it's tragic that things like that are happening and believe me, there, I'm no stranger in, you know, the professions I've been in, you know, uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, dealing with sexual harassment. Mm-hmm. You know, not me personally, obviously, but because right. uh, um, honestly, who's going to harass me? Yeah. Um, then they'll get powerbomb. So uh, <laughs> don't harass me. Don't touch you my know, bum. Um, you know, uh, oddly enough, I used to get hit on a lot by guys when I was a teenage bodybuilder. Really? Dude, at gas stations, in the gym, in the jacuzzi, in Were the, you, a you know, oh, I guess so, you know, <laughs> you know, had that nice chiseled, shaved body, you know, um, looked like a Roman gladiator, um, had guys offer to sponsor me. I go, do you need a sponsorship? Uh, wow, that's you know, weird. Uh, you know, hey now, that's only but, a little uh, uncle creeper. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, no, no uncle touchy. Come on now, <laughs> no uncle touchy. But uh, or now we have Governor Touchy. Uh, um, <laughs> but uh, uncle so moving what? up in the world, rather than President Touchy. Well, I mean, let's... not really, not not really. No, 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 no. And if we're talking about Bill Clinton, uh, he he. That was seemed all to be consensual, yeah. I was Until talking money. about Mr. <laughs> Grabber by the you know what. Oh, him. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh I was like, what do you I, think she is? A six pack? <laughs> like <laughs> you're gonna carry her home like that? Yeah. And Dummy. and he still got elected. Go figure. Go um, figure. I mean, I remember when I heard that, I'm like, he's done. This is, <laughs> this is over with. I couldn't believe you know? people actually voted him in after that. That just well, shows I the think, mental state I, of our... Well, I, I think the problem was is that there was just such a hatred for Hillary that uh, even though she won the popular vote, um, it, there was just such a... Because, like, I, I know people that just say, I hate Hillary. I go, why? Because she's a bitch. I'm like, what, what did she do? Okay. Uh, well, I just don't like her. I just don't like her attitude. I don't like that laugh. It's, you know, and there was actually, you thought that Hillary would have gotten, you know, the overwhelming majority of the woman's vote. And she didn't because women hate women. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and I tell you what, there was a, there was a big, uh, a big group of uh, women that just could not stand Hillary Clinton. Wow. So that's another reason. That's another reason why, uh, why uh, Trump got elected. Um, there are several reasons why he got elected, but, um, it doesn't matter anymore. He's out of office. He's gone. Um, well, <laughs> don't count your chickens before they hatch. He might be back which, in office at some the, point. The, I, no. <laughs> um, I mean, Biden is really going to have to fuck up really badly. In order for them to go, <laughs> yeah, let's put Trump back in there. <laughs> you know, well, you know, uh, so far I haven't seen anything other than, people that are, want to complain about things that aren't really there. Right. And uh, it's like, uh, you know, uh, when he said, uh, for example, you know, the original talk about the stimulus was, 
he said he wanted to be for two thousand dollars and then 600 when we got 600 and now we're getting 1400 that's two thousand dollars people that's what he was referring to he's trying to give us yep. when that 600 came out he said that's a down that's a down payment he goes he wants everyone to get two thousand so he'll get everyone those were his words and six is 1800 plus another 14 that's that's three thousand no, 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 no. I'm not talking about the initial. Oh, 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 you're just talking about this. I'm one. talking about the set when the second one was set to be released. Biden during the election was saying he wanted it to be two thousand dollars. Right. So then it only six hundred came out. And he said, this is just a down payment. I'll get you the rest when I'm president. And okay. now we're getting 14. That's two thousand dollars. So people are saying, oh, he lied. He said we were going to get two thousand. Now we're getting 1400. OK, fine. And then. uh a lot of people are pissed off about uh, saying he's hurting the economy by uh, stopping the uh, the pipeline. Mm. And yeah, well, he maybe he doesn't want to just fuck Indians over, Native Americans over, because they've been fucked over enough, enough as it is. Yep. And these are and the Sioux Nation saying this is sacred land to us. We don't need this going through our land. Build it somewhere else, which they can easily do. And uh, so maybe he's 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 sitting there going having some understanding towards a towards a, a group of people that have been absolutely just terrorized me, terrorized. What's what, what? No one has gotten it worse than an American Indian. No one. Mm-mm. No. So, yeah, he rejoined. He yeah, they're like, well, you rejoined the the uh, the climate accord, the Paris Climate Accord. Yeah, because he cares about the environment. Right. You know, he rejoined the World Health Organization, and now all of a sudden the World Health Organization is coming out with a statement they made. You know, they seem to have different attitude with depending on which, uh, who was in office. Yep. So, and and Biden is saying he's going to support science. You know, he believes in the science. You know, I honestly don't think that they're, they're even going to be talking about vaping right now. There's far too many other things that need to be done he mentioned in this it country. He mentioned January, though. He mentioned it last Because somebody January. asked him. Somebody asked him. Yeah, and he somebody said he was, a- that was the first thing he planned on doing was about vaping. That's that he, he never he didn't say January. that. Not he didn't year. say that. He said they asked him, and he said, he goes, well, I want to look at the science. I want to support the science. Well, if he's willing to support the science, then support the science. You know, and I, it really sounded like when they were asking, it was a blow off because I think he knows that there are far worse things going on right now. Now, I'm not, not saying he's not eventually going to because he's got that vice president is who's like uh, tried to ban vaping in California. Mm. Um, but uh, and who knows? Maybe it'll be a separate thing where she's involved in it and he's just like sitting on the sidelines. Yeah, but I think there's far more worse things going on right now in this country that they're going to be that the federal government's going to really be worried about vaping. Let's not forget right. Trump got the ball rolling on all this because his kid got caught with a jewel. Yeah, and his wife was all pissed off, so that's why. And then when then he changed his tune, yep. he changed his tune, especially after our uh, demonstrations rally. out there. The DC yeah. rally, the first one. Yeah, after the DC rally. He that weekend, just before that weekend, he had. Uh, implemented to or had planned on signing that bill for a full mm-hmm. vape ban across the United States. He had planned on signing that. When we did the DC rally, he flew mm-hmm. overhead, saw everybody there that was advocating for vaping, saw all of his constituents, and said, Oh shit. I nope. might lose. I'm going to lose voters. I'm yep. going to lose voters. I'm not signing that. Yep. So. <clears throat> Yeah, so it's the whole thing is you you got to remember like a lot of people will take one situation and blow it up yeah to make it sound like they already have you know the the bloodhound u- units just waiting to travel the country. I mean, look at the gun issue. You know, when Obama was president, everyone was screaming every day, he's going to take our guns, he's going to take our guns. He's gonna... He didn't take anybody's guns. It never happened. No. Everyone still has their guns. You know, <laughs> well, like... with the, with the amount of reach, overreach that they're exhibiting with vaping, once they're done killing vaping, that they're not going to stop there. Well, you also have to remember that it's not it, the government are really just pawns. Yeah. Okay, because 
it, it's really the pharmaceutical industry, it's the tobacco industry, it's the the the, the you know Truth Initiative, all these groups that can that can get on, get in lobbyists' head, who can then get into the, the these uh, politicians' head, mm-hmm. because they're all they're thinking about is where am I going to get my money for? I mean, it ta- it takes so much money to run for office that by the time you get elected and you start your tenure, you're practically already running for re-election, learning to raise campaign money, and it is so out of control for how much money it takes. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, so I really want to have a terrorist act in this country, shoot all the lobbyists. You know. Right. <laughs> shit shoot, right. shoot you get a power lobbyists. bomb and you get a power bomb and you get a power yeah. bomb you know you really want to if there's somebody out there that really wants to make some significant change <laughs> don't shoot the politicians we're not shoot the lobbyists we're not oh, no, no 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 this would be a good movie um, <laughs> <laughs> this would make a great film <laughs> this would make a great movie where you know you know uh where uh, this, this, you got this guy, this sniper, going out and taking out lobbyists. <laughs> hey, did you hear? Uh, did you hear? Uh, Lady Gaga's dog walker got got shot, and they stole her prized dogs. Oh yes, I did hear about that. So what I want to know is, who applies for that job next? <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> you have something. You know, to next say? thing you know, you, you see a guy with a with a with a, with a, with a Huge amount of Kevlar bodysuit on, walking around, walking dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, I could just watch like this dude in a bomb suit. <laughs> you know those. Yeah. The uh, he looks like the dude from uh, oh, what was that movie? Hurt uh, Locker. Hurt Locker. Yeah, he's wearing yes. one of those suits like, <laughs> like the dude in the Hurt Locker, walking dogs. Yeah. No, it'll be the little <laughs> robot walking the dogs. Now you can just do it remote control. Yeah. I get the the little vacuum thing to walk the dog. Yeah, through. only I would attach like a little uh, machine gun turret to the top of it just in case. <laughs> oh, followed by a little drone. <laughs> oh, jeez, fly a drone with a leash attached to it. Drone, drone dog walkers. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that'd be great. <sighs> so all of that aside, what are we uh, going to? What is our subjects for the? Well, day? it seems that we've all had kind of an interesting past couple of weeks that have kind of hit us in different ways um, and has kind of affected at least personally for myself has affected my mental health um, in, a, a, in different ways you know not necessarily bad ways but uh, both I've had ups and I've had downs different things that just happened over the the course of the past two weeks that have had me nervous, anxious. You know, I've experienced every emotion probably a hundred times in the past two weeks. Um, So I figured we could do a little little talk about some mental health stuff here. Um, Well, I certainly have the background and the experience on that. I've, I've been, as you know, I've been through some, I've been through some shit in my life. Oh yeah. Some, some of it self-inflicted. Some of it just, you know, part of life. Some of it, people were just assholes. Yes. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, uh, you know, suicide survivor. I'm, I live with bipolar disorder and, uh, which makes what I'm, what I'm doing right now, as far as my training and my diet style and all that, that those two, those two can conflict, you know, cause when you're not feeling too good, from you know being in pain from the uh, from your dis- from your injuries and disabilities, and uh, and you topped it off with the, the soreness and uh, and and the beat up feel of training really hard, and then throwing this crazy ass keto diet that I'm doing, mm. uh, you know it, it doesn't very ha- it's not very hard to hit somebody's uh, bipolar trigger which which. A lot of times what can happen, and this happens to me frequently, you know, not frequently, but when it happens, it happens. Um, somebody could say something and through no fault of their own, that can hit your trigger. Because you got to remember, it's a chemical imbalance mm-hmm. going on in your brain. Oh, yeah. So somebody could say something and the next thing you know, it just starts to mess with you. Yep. And then somebody could say something else and then that kind of gets the 
you know, if you know that someone lives with bipolar disorder and you know that someone has a trigger that no matter what it might be, if you could tell that trigger has been pulled or even squeezed, leave them alone. Yes. <laughs> just yes. let them be. That goes you're just going to make just it bipolar, worse. Bipolar, though, because I know, like, I've suffered from anxiety my well, the entire life that I can remember, but it wasn't diagnosed until within the last four or five years. And now that it's got a name, it makes it a little easier to deal with. But it's the same there with overthinking. And all it takes is one thing said with two words swapped around mm -hmm. that sets off the overthinking, sets off the anxiety, puts you on edge, makes you... Yeah, but in... But in that is... In the bipolar right. aspect, though, with anxiety you're not going to black out and smash someone. You're you're not going to go into a full-out rage and do something you're going to regret. Anxiety yeah. doesn't push you to that point. No, manic behavior is what right. does that. Not to and that extreme. Right, and that's yeah, what I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying... Yeah, that and it, in, it, in it, that it could be something direction. so stupid, too. It could be something so stupid that, you're, that you, you could be arguing with someone about or something you heard, or somebody just being a dick, right? Um, and it's just you just like you eventually just get to the point. And when you're a guy like me, you know, you got to remember I was a bouncer, a pro wrestler, a, a, a security officer. You know, I worked in a physical environment where my, you know, my personality and my aggression were turned way up at times. Right. So I have this in me. And if somebody does something or says something, or I could just be watching something on TV, you know, or, you know, uh, or just something happens, you notice something didn't get done and you're just like, all of a sudden you start to get manic. And that, and if, if you start to get manic, you know, I'm aware of it now, you know, cause I've been dealing with it for a long enough time. But if if uh, someone uh, if you're manic if you're starting to get manic, and you know you're in a in a, in surroundings that are you, they keep pushing your buttons, it's like they don't want to stop uh, talking or arguing, or they don't want to turn off whatever's on that's bothering you, or they don't want to clean up. You know, whoever is in the situation where there's a significant <sighs> other, a friend, a family member. You know, I, it not it's not limited to just you know your significant other in a relationship. Right. It could be anybody, and uh, if they are not doing something to tr try to draw you know draw back the situation, instead they're they keep poking the bear, as I like to call it. Um, yeah, that manic is is going to get way out of control. Oh yeah. And what what usually happens with me is that manic behavior can last a few hours to a few days, sometimes a week. Mm -hmm. And that's where it gets really dangerous because, um, you know, you could be out in public and you're manic and somebody says something and then you're going to wind up in jail. Right. Um, as opposed to... Um, <clears throat> and then what, what happens with me is like, I generally, if I'm manic, it lasts for a few hours, sometimes a day, sometimes two days. That's that's usually the extent of it. Then I come down from that and I get very depressed. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of it is also thinking about the way I was behaving. Yeah. And I was just like, what the hell was wrong with me? Why am I this way? You know, all the, and you get very depressed. And that depression can last for weeks. We well, gotta figure, like, when you have a manic episode that lasts as long as, you know, a few days to a week or whatever. Mm -hmm. When you have a manic episode like that, it takes a real toll on your body. Oh, yeah. And it exhausts yeah. you. And that will put you into a depression. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you don't even want to move. You're just laying there and you're just like... Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to get have manic episodes and then have to go work graveyard shift. Mm. And I would be, you know, nobody better fuck up around me because, I, I, you know, I'd throw them off the roof. You know, I would... <laughs> I would you know... I had a guy uh, one time, 
um, I was in a real manic stage and some guy mouthed off to me that he wasn't going to do, he wasn't going to leave and he left and his head, uh, you know, kind of, uh, got uh, sideswiped a little bit from some cars that were in the way, but it wasn't my fault that he walked into those. He should have just cooperated and, <laughs> you know, and just walked off campus, you know, but yep. that happens, you know, and, you know, there's been things that I've been actually very fortunate that I got away with. Right. That no one, no one reported me. Either. What's that? They're not our proudest moments either. No. And then you think about that, that's when you get depressed because you start thinking about, okay, I could have killed somebody. Yeah. Or I could have done some permanent damage to somebody. And, you know, while I joke about power bombing this and power bombing that and power bombing the world, I'm actually a pretty gentle guy and I don't want to hurt anybody. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some people that do need an ass whooping. All right. You know, no one's above an ass whooping. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and I do wish the, the bitch slap was legal. So, you know, at least if you ever watch NCIS, it's uh, the Gibbs slap. You slap yes, a guy in the nose. Of the head. Head. Yeah, we call that the denozo. No, it's the yeah, and uh, you know, you slap him in the back. I wish that was legal because there are so many people that I just want to go. What's the matter with you? <laughs> my favorite phrase that I yell around my house on a regular basis is, "What is wrong with your head?" <laughs> yep. And then yep. I proceed to tell her <clears throat> what is wrong with my head. <laughs> I, and that's I, even that's another part that that really drives me crazy is when you're trying to tell somebody, look, I'm bipolar. They're like, I don't know why you're acting like this. I go, listen, I live with bipolar disorder. Just back off. You know, I'm trying to keep it in check right now. But if you keep pushing my buttons, something bad is going to happen. And they think you're just talking tough. They think you're just right. Oh, he's just saying that. And. And then no. Then they wake up. Then they wake up in the in in the uh, intensive care unit. And they're like, oh, I guess he wasn't lying. Yeah. Um, See, I agree, but I disagree because yes, bipolar does have that manic and the penchant for violence. But as someone who's observed that from the outside and deals with the amount of anxiety that I have. Anxiety does similar in a less violent way. That starts well, to peak. And when that starts to peak, you can no longer think straight. When you can't think straight, nothing gets done. When nothing gets done, literally everything around you crumbles. And you're done. But understand that uh, anxiety is a part of bipolar disorder. It can be. Yeah, it can, can be. be. Yes, people. It can manifest on its own as anxiety, but it is also uh, an aspect of the bipolar <clears throat> disorder as well. Yeah, and there's there's plenty of times where I'm just having some anxiety, mm -hmm. and I recognize it, and I go, "Well, I'm not having an episode, so I just need to, you know, calm myself, you know, figure out things." That's how like vaping inter intervenes sometimes, where I can go and build, and. Uh, you know, produce, make new setups and things, and that calms me down, you know, calms that anxiety down. Right. Um, or just watch things on television, get in, get into something on YouTube, or, uh, you know, even Discord has been, you know, amazing for me, because there's times I am, like, very, I have a lot of anxiety, or I, I'm very depressed, and I'll go on Discord, and I'll start laughing, and I'll, and I'll feel better. Yeah, absolutely. That's you know, you're not thinking about the, the problems you have, you know? Absolutely. And that's one thing that I did was, um, you know, like everybody that, that is probably listening to this, you guys uh, out there, you already know I have ADHD, bipolar disorder. Um, I've also been diagnosed with intermittent explosive disorder, um, mm -hmm. borderline personality disorder. And it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to handle all at once um, and sometimes you can't stop it sometimes all of those things no. activate at once and it's like wonder twin powers activate and it's it just overwhelming uh, you can't really control yourself but on, on your bipolar conversation the opposite is also true because when you have a bipolar or manic episode like that and somebody pushes your buttons to the point where there's no return. You don't know how to pick your battles. <laughs> so you could get in a really 
bad position. Oh yeah, I'm not. You know, uh, yeah, it's like it's a good thing I've never had a manic episode in the middle of South Central Los Angeles. You know, because I'd probably get fucked up. But uh, <laughs> um, you know, see, it was really interesting. Was that you know, I I didn't get uh, really truly diagnosed with bipolar disorder until twenty until twenty sixteen. And uh, but I had been told previously that I was bipolar and then told I wasn't, that I just had anxiety disorder. Um, but then, you know, more, t- more tests were done, more behavior patterns were studied. And they're like, no, this is far more than just anxiety. This is, this is bipolar disorder. Plus, I have a family history of, of uh, you know, my mother was uh, manic depressant. You know, they uh, didn't have a qual- they didn't call it bipolar disorder back then. Um, but, uh, and I just think that, uh, you know, if it, you're not required to understand all you're required to do is listen to what the person is telling you, recognize the signs, go, yeah, this guy's about to blow Mm -hmm. and, or this girl's about to blow and I'm talking about her mental, uh, yes, uh, (laughs) (laughs) um but uh and when that happens you just you need to you know if this person is your friend your 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 lover your family Mm -hmm. whatever you have to take a step back and go you know what let me table whatever i'm arguing with them about let's let cool heads prevail let's see if about just getting this person calm and cool and not worry about any of this silly nonsense that we're arguing about. Right. The little shit. The little shit that doesn't matter. Like they say, don't yeah, it doesn't small matter. stuff. Um, but, so, I'll, I'll start here. What I want to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the past two weeks. I'm not going to go into severe detail. I know a lot of people have heard a lot about my story over Facebook or through Discord with me in the in the the voice chats and video chats or in Zoom. So I'm not going to go incredibly in-depth with what's been going on for me the past couple of weeks, but I'm going to go into like a brief overview and how it's affected my emotions and mental health uh, over that course of time. Um, A lot of people know I, I, uh, you know, family things have come up lately. Mm -hmm. Uh, Found out that my, my biological father had passed away in uh, October of last year. Um, That one kind of brought me down a little bit. I wasn't really feeling so great after that because of, you know, um, answers to questions that I would never get at that point. Um, Also, at the same time, found out that my sister that I'd never met had, uh, my youngest sister that I'd never met had passed away that Monday of colon cancer. Uh, Also brought me down a little bit because no, I'd never met her but I would have loved to. Um, so that had me down a little bit. But then I got in touch with my brother, who I hadn't talked to in 10 years, and that brought me up a little bit. And then, come to find out, I can get in touch with my older sister, my oldest sister. And that brought me up even more. And it kind of put me... Yeah, in. You, you were telling me you uh, when you met with her uh, that it went really well. It did. It went very, very well. Um, We sat down. We had a nice long talk about the history of us, our upbringings, the way we were raised. And um, it's, it's, it's different. It's, uh, I don't want to say the, use the word weird. It's not weird. It's just different. Seeing another member of your family and talking with them, and then realizing that the two of you have had extremely different upbringings. Um, I'm Mm -hmm. not going to go into her side of the story, but, uh, you know, we just did. We just had two very, very different upbringings. And uh, parts of her story, I feel really, really bad for her. Um, I didn't have it nearly as bad as she did. But, you know, that it did it went very well that lifted me up even further and that 
I was nervous and anxious before the meet because I had never met her before. I'd only talked to her on the phone one time for about two hours. And that was uh, after, not last Sunday. Last Sunday was the day we met. So it was the Sunday before. It was two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. And um, I, I met with her. I was anxious up until that point. I was nervous, paranoid. My mind was running off with itself. Oh, I yeah, because it's, it's back of your head. You're going, this could go really bad. This could go really you know? bad. She could turn around and say, you know what? I've lived my life of 48 years without you in it, and I can live the rest of my life without you in it. Or she could turn around and say, hey, you know what? Your family, I really want to get to know you. Let's, you know, let's do this. And that's exactly what she said uh, in, in lesser yeah. words. But that's the point she wanted to get across. Yeah. So that made me super, super happy and made me realize that, you know, I was overthinking everything and I was worrying too much about stuff that was out of my control way too early to be worrying about it. You know, yeah. um, don't worry about an issue until there's reason to worry about an issue. And those were very, very good words given to me by a good friend of ours, Mr. Duchess. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's one of those things. And I started worrying about it way too early. But then we had the meet up and it crushed all those doubts that I had. Crushed them. And then I thought about yeah. it. And uh, I had been thinking about it a few days beforehand uh, when I started getting these uplifting moments in my life. And... Um, you know, I realized there's a lot about myself that I'm not happy with. And I am in, I, I don't know how this wake up call happened, but I've been on this kick where I, I have life changes that need to be made. And that's exactly where I'm focusing. Um, I've been gung ho about this since, uh, since the day I, I had this wake up call. I've been changing a lot of things, not just externally, but internally as well, mm -hmm. dealing with my bipolar, my ADHD, my anxieties, um, my patience levels with my wife and my daughter. Um, the way we communicate has changed a little so far. It'll change more as time goes on, but so far a, there's been a difference that everybody can see. and. It's it's been absolutely amazing. After the meeting, um, what else happened? Yeah, I, I've been making these changes and I've been putting in the work. So finally, uh, after quite a long time of being out of work, I finally have a job interview on Saturday. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, bro. I might be. Uh, it's at a, a pool company. It could be there. the The people own two different businesses. There's a pool company for swimming pools, or there's a pet supply shop that they have um so it could be either one but i know it's for like a sales associate kind of position so i'm fairly certain it's something i'm going to do but that happened and that raised my spirits uh, that was just today actually um but i've been getting you know treatments in line i've got doctors lined up that i'm going to be starting to see again um it, there's just been so many things that it seems like when i woke up and i had that positive attitude that go get them attitude once I had that things really started to fall into place you know so I think that the quality of your life can really be directly affected by your mental health by your mental status and the more positive it is I feel like the more positive you're going to be and you're going to change things. Things are going to change for the better. That's how I kind of see it. I, I don't know. That's what I've been telling you for years. Yeah, well, if thank you, you. If you walk into a situation expecting failure, it's going to fail. Because you're not going to let it succeed. If a man is convinced he's going to die tomorrow, he'll probably find a way to make it happen so he's in control. Hmm. Yep. That's 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 a very true statement, Matt. Yep. Um, see, I, I have I, I've over the past. So this is something that a lot of people don't know about me and how I've been 
over the course of the past six months. There was a point, probably about three months ago, or maybe um, I'd say two, two and a half months ago, there was a point when my depression had reached that point. And I'm sorry to say it, but yeah, I had those thoughts. And yeah, I had a plan. And yeah, uh -huh. I set all the equipment up for it. Did I do it? No. Good. Um, it, it's hard for me to talk about that stuff, but I get that way. Just like many of you out there listening do. Just like you probably do, Matt. You know, we all... Well, yeah, no, I understand because I am a suicide survivor. Back in uh, June of 2016, for the past several months, I would had been going through a severe depression because my marriage was was failing. Mm. And, uh, you know, there, there were a lot of things in retrospect that I had just put in my own head mm. that uh, probably weren't true. And uh, or there was something if something was going on, it wasn't as bad as I was making it out to be. Right. Um, and there were things that were just completely out of my control that were happening that, uh, you know, is a part of a marriage going bad. Right. Um, so my my plan was on June 10th, 2016, my uh, 10 year wedding anniversary, I was going to give her a dead husband. Uh for our 10 year wedding anniversary gift. And uh, so the night before, um, you know, I went out, I drank, partied, uh, ate uh, the most unhealthiest food I could. And uh, I went home and I swallowed enough different uh, medications to kill a fleet of elephants. And uh, what how my life was it, well apparently i started choking on my vomit my body i started regurgitating in my sleep uh because i had a lot of crap in me and uh i started choking on my vomit to the point where i choked and suffocated you know, I, my 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 uh, lungs collapsed and i passed out what saved me was my dog chewy uh he went and alerted my uh my now ex-wife um and she came out and found me and called 911 and they had to use adrenaline and the, the shock system Oof. to get me yeah i mean it was bad i was practically dead and then uh transferred me to the hospital which was very close by and i was i had about 50 different tubes coming out of me and was in a coma for a week and uh I tell you what, uh, you know, when I, it took me several months to recover from that. Um, I can imagine. And, oh yeah, and uh, it, the the realization of what I did was what I did was wrong was the it was how people in my life, friends, especially family, how I mean they came, they were by my side. But at the same time, they were very, you know, and it cost me a lot of things. Mm. You know, I, I had been doing commentary for a wrestling company, and they all turned their backs on me. No, I mean, not all the wrestlers, so to say, but the, the people right. within the company. Yeah. You know, they, 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 they were there to make sure I got better. And after I got better, it's like, well, we don't want you around no more because, you know, you did Your this thing. And we don't know. We, yeah, we don't know how, you know. Yeah, I can remember the promoter. Uh, he uh, he would say thing. He he started saying like, "Yeah, well, your performance had been declining, and uh, you know you you were working high." And I told him, "I go well, who you're you're accusing me of working high? You're the one who gave me the three the the the, the five bottles of somas that I was taking to get high with." So <laughs> there's, yeah. there's a lot of hypoc a lot of hypocrisy that goes on. Yeah, you know, but. Uh, um, so, I mean, that, it cost me that, of course, once I did, once I did that deed, uh, my, my now ex-wife was very distant after that point. You could see it in her eyes. You could, you know, now that I reflect back and I look, she just did not know how to handle it, not know how to deal with it. And it was like, you know, I'm really done with this because this guy is just, he's, he out of his mind. Does he, he's, well, I don't necessarily out of his mind, but. He wanted. He tried to leave me oh. by by doing this. Yeah, you know, 
that From type of situation that type view, of there's no handbook on that stuff no there's not there's... but i mean i could i remember just looking in her eye and i, I reflected it now about but back on it now and i'm just like yeah that was really the point where she just gave up yeah and she was just like you know we were having problems and uh then it just escalated you know after i did that deed it was uh it was just a foregone conclusion that it was going to over be over and i can remember telling myself like i remember hearing jack nicholson's voice from batman <laughs> as the joker going you know where he's telling uh um what's his name the boss grissom he's telling you said he was having an affair with his with boss grissom's girlfriend and that's why boss grissom said take him out um and he's like uh you set me up over a woman a woman and that's what i kept telling myself in my head i tried to kill myself over a woman a woman you know and i remember telling my shrink she's like you know what are you gonna do what's your plan i go my plan is to get the hell out of this and I literally formed a plan because I couldn't just leave. Right. And I had some friends come to me and say, "You can come stay with us." I say, "Well, I got to get, I got to make sure that that uh, when I move out of here, that uh, the yeah, I want to do it like right before the lease is up, so I can make sure that's paid, because uh, I don't want to get a uh, eviction notice on my on my credit. I want to make sure certain bills are paid off. I want to make sure I have enough money to move. Right. And because uh, at the time I wasn't, I was working a part time job. I was on disability." You know, so, mm -hmm. uh, but I did it. I was successful at it. I, uh, I got out of there. Um, I tell you what, that first night the, after I moved out, I slept better than I've ever slept in my life. Really? I got like, a, I got like 10 hours of just solid sleep. Just, wow. you know, yeah, you know, because it was finally over that all that was finally over and I could move on and, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, move on and just find some more happiness, some, some actual happiness in my life. Right. And, uh, and even when you do that, they're still struggling. There's still, you're all those, the issues that you were dealing with that you don't have to deal with those particular issues anymore, but a lot of the emotion and the feeling and the, the, the anxiety, the manic behavior, the depression, all that is going to come up in just different forms or for different reasons. Mm hmm. So you're, it's a constant struggle. It's a constant battle. You know, uh, it's just one of those things where it's never, it never, it never ends. Right. There's always going to be, all you can do is try to learn from each experience that you go through and try to recognize it so it doesn't get out of control. Um, but even still, it could still happen. Right. Absolutely. Um, Pixie, we know that you have uh some anxiety um issues that you deal with is there anything else that that i don't want to say ails you but is there anything else that makes life a little bit more difficult for you other than dealing with me <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say i was gonna say she's married to you i imagine her anxiety is you know. right i honestly it my anxiety is probably the worst of it and it makes me my own worst enemy and to just hear the word by itself doesn't seem like a lot but the second I wake up in the morning it kicks in mm. and it kicks in because I worry am I being too loud getting ready for work am I gonna wake him up is are we going to get up for school today? Am I going to have to fight with her to do that? You know, even when I get rolling, it's when I walk down those stairs, the first thought in my head every morning is, are the dog and cat okay? Yeah. What am I going to do if they're not okay? What if he doesn't wake up? What if this happens? What if, and it's a constant running commentary in my head as I fight with literally nobody but myself. Like the whole day can go perfect for everyone else in my day and be like this was the most amazing day ever this was great and in my head I can go back and I can pinpoint and pick out 50 different times where I screwed up I said the wrong thing I hesitated too long I didn't hesitate enough I I should have been there I should have answered that call I should have answered that text and it makes me 
a bad person. Like, <laughs> it makes you feel I, like a bad no, no, person. No, 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 no. It makes me a bad person. Mm-mm. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't make you a bad person. My friends try to contact me, and I'm in the middle of an issue or an episode. It's not showing outwardly. So people okay. don't see it. I'm not shaking. I'm not having a panic attack. I'm not. It can look like me just being lazy. But I don't know what that phone call holds. And okay. that bothers me. That gets to me. So I wait for them to leave a message. If they don't leave a message, I tend to not call them back. Because I don't know what it was about. And then that anxiety grows. And after two, three, Doesn't four make days, a person, though. It, it makes me a very hard to reach friend. That makes you feel like a bad person though that does not make yeah. you a bad person well little, no because little, I've little. lost friends because of it we've have had arguments and lost people out of my life because I couldn't put into words back this is then good. this is good what I can now little side note you're talking about people not leaving a message you know um, one thing I was dealing with when I was uh, in recovery after my suicide attempt uh is I would have people talk to me, call me, and then they'd say, hey, uh, so-and-so says hi. I'm like, really? In the age of texting, they, 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 they need to pass a message through you? They can't just text me hello? Right. You know? Right. Oh, they yeah. want me to give you, they want me to give, uh, they want me to give you their best. That's their best? A secondhand message through you? That's your best? <laughs> Obviously, they don't, they don't give a <laughs> shit. Well, I, I can see what you're saying, uh, Pixie, but I, I do feel like you're being a little hard on yourself. You're not, it doesn't make you a bad person because you don't do that. It, and because you've lost friends, that just tells me that the friends that you lost didn't understand and weren't really giving enough of a damn to find out. Yeah. And I, I have friends that I have, fr- I have friends that I've known most. M- for my entire adult life into my into my teenage years mm-hmm. and I can go a year without talking to them you know social media makes it a little you know because you, you do like you know hit the like button or make comments on social media right. but I could go a year without speaking to somebody and then a test of a true friend is then 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 for whatever reason you call them up or they call you up or you run into each other or whatever and you start talking as though you saw each other yesterday Right. See, it's super funny because you know. he and I were talking about this the other day. In people, I, I think the word I want to use is in neurotypical people, people that don't have bipolar, people that don't have ADHD, people that don't suffer from a lot of that kind of stuff, there's a regular and normal friendship degradation that happens over time. So if you go six months without talking to someone, you might kind of be stepped back one or two until you get comfortable with with each other again. Oh, sure. Sure, that goes on too. When you're divergent from that, I'm the same way. And I attribute that a lot to the ADHD. And that's, I have a friend of mine, I have not spoken to her in over a year. But if I called her up right now and she wasn't busy with work and she picked up her phone... We would be talking like she still lives a half a mile down the street. Mm-hmm. I only it's have good like to have friends like four that. friends. <laughs> you do? But or don't. I only have like four friends, and all four of those friends are those type of friends. Yeah. No. I. Uh, I have. Uh, I have like categories of friends. Like I have like mm-hmm. my click. Uh, and then I have, you know, general friends, um, and then I have people I associate with. Yep. Like, then I have people that think I, that, that they're my friend, but I'm not their friend. I don't know why the fuck they think I'm their friend, but, uh, you know, I have one very close friend and much like her friend that she was just talking about. Um, I've been friends with this guy for easily over 20. What am I, 39? 22 years, 23 years now. We've been friends uh, so long now. And uh, we will go 
year, two years without speaking to each other. And then when we do come back, like her, it's like we've never had a break in the relationship. It was always, you know, back into the same old. Like we were still talking like we talked yesterday. Um, yeah. And that that is a great relationship to have if you can find one. I know a lot of people uh, don't have that. I had to leave a lot of people behind in my life. Um, because I needed to get to a better place, and well, I had some. I you know I I went to through, through some changes in my life over the years, particular you know in my thirties, where you know I started my when I was thirty years old I got married. Six months later I got diagnosed with cancer. Um, you know that changes you. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, and uh, I went from being a, a a very Christian conservative type person. To I'm now what I call what I can what I like to call a progressive atheist, um, and that is a complete 180 of a of a difference. Yeah, you know, and uh, so I've seen what you know, and there were people that I had to I had to disassociate with, and friendships that had to end because I no longer could stomach the behavior of the of those type of people. Right. Um, you know, particularly when it came to like, you know, sexist and racist behavior and uh, um, an overall uh, attitude of uh, superiority, you know, that, that's, that, that, that some of these people had. But it, it's hard. It's hard when you're trying to like really maintain a friendship with people that have been in your life for so long. But then you change as a person. They don't change. They're still the same person. But you change. And even by you know expressing these uh, these changes to to these people, that leads to a resentment. Oh, you no longer believe this. You no longer feel that way about this. Well, you voted for a black guy. I don't want to talk to you anymore. You know, um, and it's sad that that happens. But sometimes it's just necessary because you need to get that get that negativity out of your life. Yep. Just because you yourself are ready for growth doesn't mean the people who are who are around you are the same. Right, right. You might grow, but, you know, the rest of the the world might stay the same, you know. But something to keep in mind is every story's villain is a hero from the other side. So for every yeah. person you've lost like that because of that, there are people out there that have done the same to you. Because at the point they were ready to move on, you were not. Right. Yeah, no, and I've had that. I've had it happen both ways, <clears throat> where I've done it and then they've done it. You know. So I mean, there's a plethora of different different things that can onset these these symptoms of um, mental health disorders, such as you know bipolar, um, ADHD. And it, it can, like you said, it can be a lot of the times it can be something really, really stupid and small yeah. and not like but, so insignificant that, you know, well, it doesn't even matter. But I would like to throw out there, though, um, is that not everything, not everything that has to do with your attitude has to do with bipolar disorder. No. Or ADHD. No, no. Sometimes you're just being a fucking asshole. Yep. yep. <laughs> Sometimes you're just being a fucking asshole. Yep. There are those days, you know? too. Sure. For so, sure. I mean, there are times that, yes, I'm like, you know, this is a, I have a mental illness. Um, this is what I need from, uh, from you, from my friends, from my family. Uh, and then there's other times that, yeah, go ahead and call me out because I'm being a dick. You know, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about triggers like you had brought up before now when it comes to triggers how how do we pinpoint our triggers how do you discover your triggers for yourself the only one that I know that I have that's a trigger is when someone is is saying things to me about something they know nothing about mm -hmm. uh particularly about like my disabilities, my injuries, 
Mm. Um, and they start to talk to you as though they know better and you were wrong. And I'm just sitting there going, or, you know, uh, yeah, don't, there are certain, you know, look, I'm a guy who fucks with, I fuck with everybody. Right. All right. You know, and I'm not above being fucked with, you know, but you know, you don't, if somebody dies, you don't, uh, uh, start telling jokes about that person right away, you know, right. With few exceptions, but I mean, uh, I agree with you, you know, you know, if uh, someone is raped, if you know somebody had a miscarriage, you don't tell a miscarriage joke at a party with that person standing right there. No, you know, you definitely don't. Um, you know, because you know, but at the so for you know, there's certain things that you do have to be sensitive to, um, and there's other times that you. Uh, this is particularly true in relationships that you have to. The two of you could be in a disagreement about something. Mm -hmm. And it could lead to one person just being so strong about that issue and really having a problem. It really just burns them emotionally. And you don't get it. You're just like, I didn't, I didn't, is it that bad? I mean, did I murder your children? Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, what you do have to do is you have to go, you know what? I love this person and I have to be more sensitive to that. And I have to, I have to be the bigger person and say, you know what, I can't do that or I can't say that or I can't show that because it is going to really hurt them. And even though I don't understand it, you know, to that significant level, I have, I have more, to be the bigger love person. And respect for them to do it exactly. regardless of my personal feelings on it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. I don't like and, seeing uh, them upset, and if this one stupid thing that I do makes them that upset, I'm not going to do it because the thing is not as important to right. me as they are. And what you were just talking about, Matt, that that's a prime example of me, is those inner voices. I need to tell myself inside my own head, you know, this is something silly, that you should not be upset by this. But little triggers like, well, my biggest trigger is stupidity. That is my biggest trigger. Um, I, I don't like stupidity. I have a really good one. What? That's actually one of the things that we've had an issue about is our daughter is 14. Mm -hmm. And she makes noises. So like she and I, oh if you God. could see his face right now, she and I will be sitting in the kitchen and cooking. And she'll look at me and she'll hold something up and she'll just go, hmm? Or she'll make and animal I'll, noises. I'll trill at her and just, Burr. and we will have full-fledged conversations between each other, literally doing nothing but stupid noises. And it, you can hear him sighing because it drives him crazy. She's 14 years old. She does not need to act like a baby. I am 34. <laughs> and, and I still either. find it amusing. But that's one of those things that if he's it's, around. Yeah, it's something that it's so It's silly a trigger. You got you to gotta know that this really. And you can't have this attitude of, well, I don't know why you get so upset. That Look, it, that's not it. Like I, I said earlier, you're not required to understand. You're just required to do because this is what that person needs to remain calm. And that's what right, I was getting right, to. Right, right, right. Is the fact that when she and I have the house to ourselves, mm -hmm. or he's listening to his music loud downstairs, we have what we call don't tell daddy moments. <laughs> where we'll have those stupid conversations in our own little hidden languages of, of clicks and noises and sounds. Because it allows us to be us. But While that's, not pushing against that trigger, but that's also for him. give and take. This is not to make I had, me sound. I, I, had, I had some no, don't tell. That's, I, that's I had those, some don't. It was just a, the only thing I could think of as a perfect example of something that I find silly. Yes. That really, really, like deep down, bothers him. Yeah. And I don't have to know why. I just know that it bothers him that much. And I love him. I don't want to fight with him. I don't want to argue with him over it. We don't want to make him angry. Especially not for something that silly and stupid for us that we just do for fun. But on the other aspect of that, it's 
It's not something I should be getting that aggravated about. And by using the proper coping coping mechanisms and tools that I've I've been taught, that shouldn't happen. But the problem is that for most of my life, I haven't used those tools and those mechanisms. I learned them, sure. I know what they are. I just don't apply them. Well, it should have happened a long time ago, but recently I've actually started to employ those techniques and those methods, and it's actually been working out pretty well so far. Um, you know, there's so many things. Like, yeah, though they get on my nerves when that happens, but that's when I need to be like, dude, chill. It's nothing huge. It yeah. Doesn't it doesn't hurt anybody nobody and there's times you just have to just walk walk away you just have to walk out of the room yeah. and just get get just the hell away nothing. from it and say you know what and I, I i have been a proponent of that of saying look if if this really bothers you uh instead of yelling at me just leave just walk away mm-hmm. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna stop you you need a moment but i you know I, the reverse is true too sometimes i need a moment you know it's just like you know what i'm gonna go over here uh, I'll, I'm going to calm down and then, you know, because this is kind of stupid that I'm letting this bother me, but it still bothers me. Right. Um, you know, like I'm, I hate, uh, sloppiness. I hate, uh, when people don't clean up after themselves, you know, I'm not saying you got to live, live like you, like you live in a museum right, or anything like that, but you know, don't leave your shit all over the floor. You know, put stuff away. Yep. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you left it out the night before, you wake up in the morning and put it away. Fine. But if it's been sitting there for six months, uh, <laughs> and then don't get mad and then don't get mad at me if I, if I clean it up and you don't like how I did it, you know, uh, right. you know, and I've had that happen at home. I've had that happen at work. I've had to had that happen you know, uh, backstage at a wrestling show, you know, uh, where it's just like, this bothers me, so I'm going to fix it. And then they're like, well, why'd you do that? I'm like, because it was annoying. <laughs> and they're like, well, I, I wanted it that way. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, I want you to, uh, I want to throw you through a wood chipper and see what happens, but I can't do that. So, <laughs> um, that happens a cause... lot around here because he's very clean. And I'm very not organized chaos. Like you can look at my nightstand and have no idea where anything is. You can't even see half the shit that's on there. But if you ask me where this is, I know exactly in that chaos where to look, where it is, what it's under, and what it's next to. Uh, yeah, I suppose there is that. But for some reason, it still takes you ten, fifteen minutes to find it. No, nope. yeah, um, that's me. not me. That's, me. that's him. That's me. He's organized as all get out, but he organizes so much that he over organizes himself. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I have a good balance with it. Like I could leave stuff laying around, round, but it's in an area that's not going to get in the way of other things. Right. Like my get my desk, for example. You know, my desk right now is a mess. You know, it would take me five minutes to clean it up. Five ten minutes to clean it up. But I'm just lazy and I haven't done it. Um, but it's not affecting anyone else in the house. Right. However, if you're uh, you're going into the bathroom and there's uh, Legos on stuff the on the floor, uh, there, yeah, there's you know, or cat. To- I threw a bunch of cat toys away the other day because it was driving me crazy. This cat playing with this toy and knocking it under something and then scratching the hell out of something to try to get it out. And just and I threw that away, and then I found and then the cat found another one, and I threw that away, and the cat found another one. Like how many of these things does this cat have? You know, uh, this is just annoying. Um, but uh, and that's just a, a, a personal quirk. I'm not going to have an episode over that. But uh, I it is it's one of those things though that I'm just like you know what? I'm just going to throw this shit away because it's I don't think anyone would really notice. You know? Right. Um, Because it's in the midst of so much other chaos that uh, nobody knows. I, yeah, like you know, I could go a couple days with dishes being in the sink, but then 
I want to do, get the dishes done. I want either me or somebody to get do dishes. You know, uh, um, the trash. I would like the trash to be taken out every night. But sometimes, you know, especially when you're dealing with teenagers, you know, they forget. You don't remind them. They go to bed and then you go, oh, they didn't take the trash out. Fine. Take it out the next day. I'm not going to I'm not going to kick his door down and go, you forgot to take the trash out, you little <laughs> bastard. You know, you know. See, and that's where my anxiety comes from, because I came from a household where if you forgot to do if I was told to feed the dogs, run the dogs and take the trash out, it didn't matter what time it was. The minute it was realized that that trash was not taken out, it could be three o'clock in the morning. That door was getting slammed open. That bed was getting kicked on the side. And I was getting up to take that trash out. Mm. Mental health is a very big topic. And there's so many different aspects. That we, we could do several about. shows on this. Yeah, we could do several shows on this. And we probably will over the course of time. We'll probably revisit this again as well. Um, but we've got multiple, multiple outlets for learning about these disorders, learning how to cope with these disorders. And there are even ways for people, say, you know, Say Roxanne Pixie didn't have any anxiety issues or ADHD or anything, um, and I was the only one to deal with any of these things. There are places for her to go to learn how these these things affect people, and there are also coping mechanisms that they can use as well. But the bigger job is on us as the one who deals with them every day, working internally on ourselves. Um, there's, there, there's, there's other things to use the internet for besides, besides social media, you know, and, and, uh, and well, you know, that's, <laughs> I can openly I, admit, I, that I, I wasn't going to bring that up, but <laughs> <laughs> I can openly admit that on a regular basis over, and we've been together September of this year will be 16 years yep. that we've been together. That's a long time. It's a long time to be friends with someone. Never mind be with them in a relationship. And there have been many a time where I have been so frustrated with anything that I absolutely turn to Google. And God forbid when I pass that my best friend doesn't wipe my damn search history. Because <laughs> some of the stuff that I've had to Google ha has been ridiculous and so out there that it brings you down the rabbit hole, but the resources are there. Mm -hmm. Even if it seems like the dumbest issue ever. There is someone out there that has had that issue, and there are people who are who are or have discussed it enough mm -hmm. to give you an outside point of view, even if that's just an outside point of view, so you can make up your own mind as to what or how you have to deal with that situation. Well, at this point, if you've thought about it, it's on the internet. <laughs> if you've thought about it, so has someone else, and it's there. <laughs> so, but you know, you're some right. of the things we think about, well, some of the things we think about, are going. Maybe that shouldn't be on the internet. But no. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, it's um, it, especially over here, it is give and take. Like she said, she kind of panders to me in a way when she has to back down, and then there are other days that I have to do all the backing down and you know it, it's give and take it has to be but it's understanding when we get to that point where we can't handle anymore without pushing ourselves further into a hole that's that's when it becomes <clears throat> necessary and that, that goes for anyone, too. That's yeah, not, I that's mean, not we just have, for us. That's not specific to us, no. You know, we have the most experience when it comes to a relationship simply because we're in one, and that's where most of our issues have arisen. Mm -hmm. But that goes for friends, too. I have a friend of mine that's bipolar. Her bipolar presents completely differently than his. And that, I, I tend to keep people around me that do what I call the mom friend trump card and that is when 
somebody else around me is having an issue that is bigger than my anxiety and my ADHD kicking in, all of a sudden, all of that can get shoved aside and I can do the thing just to make sure that they're okay. Once they're okay, everything crashes down on top of me afterwards. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I, I can see that. Like, you put your, your stuff to the back burner for a few to deal with what you've got to deal with and then when you have nothing to deal with in front of you it just hits you that much harder yeah it all just floods in and you're done yep i agree how about you matt yeah yeah no i i get it um i think that uh you know we when it comes to bipolar disorder you know personality has a lot to do do with uh it and people, depending on their personality, are going to react differently. Right. Like, yeah. People, both two people can be bipolar one or bipolar two, and they're going to react differently. Right. Because simply because of their personalities. That's right. You know, and sometimes, and sometimes one of the things you can do with bipolar disorder, uh, with, if you have bipolar disorder, is maybe there's certain aspects of your personality that you might want to change. Right. Maybe there's certain things that you should go, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but then there's other times where it's just like, look, this is part of who I am. I like this about myself. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting this manic over something stupid. Uh Maybe I should I should start heeding my, a lot of my own advice and yeah. say just walk away, just walk away, mm-hmm. just get up and leave the room. Absolutely, I agree with that. Um, and I I've ugh, man I can talk forever on mine. Um, you know it it's been a lifetime of ups and downs and round and rounds and and that's where I'm at though now is that. I'm at that point in life when I want to progress and I want to make that better. So I'm making, you know, the right decisions at the right times. I'm making different decisions than I normally would because I'm using those methods, those techniques to try and help myself to get it onto a a better path uh, as far as my uh, mental health is concerned. So I'm right there. Like, I totally get that. Um, coping mechanisms that I use would be stuff like something my therapist had had discussed with me is uh, trying to change the way I communicate with people Um, in one area uh, one aspect of that is by using what he called I statements and don't use you statements and what that means is basically if I'm talking with you Matt and there's an issue that we have to discuss, I'm not going to sit mm-hmm. there and say, you did this, you're a dick. I'm going to say, I feel like this should have been done, and I don't mm-hmm. think that you know, you're know you taking into consideration everything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's, it's how you it's present a, it. It's a, it gets your point across, but it's non-aggressive. You know what I mean? Non- non-confrontational ways of dealing with issues by saying, I, you're talking about yourself and your feelings yep. and what you think, which means they have nothing to react aggressively towards because they're not, they don't feel the need to defend themselves. So like right. taking the trash out. I feel like that definitely should have been done today. It sounds a lot better than what the hell I thought you were going to take this out earlier. You didn't do your job. Exactly. You didn't do your job, and now I have to do it, and what the hell? Right. Yep. Using I statements instead of you statements is a good one. Um, If you have the capacity to do so, when you find yourself starting to get into that mood, recognizing those signs... And being like, hey, 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 whoa, whoa, let's slow the train down just a minute. Is this really going to be the best for me? 
by doing it this way. And no, sometimes, <laughs> most of the time, my answer to myself is, nope, nope, this is not the way it should go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, sometimes you're just going, no, this shouldn't happen, and I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest, but, the biggest key is being able to communicate to people around you and having people that can communicate back. And that actually, and that's one of the things that sucks, too, is when you do communicate with the people around you and they still do things that push your buttons and hit your triggers. Right, because they and don't understand. It's just, because they don't understand. And that's why I've always said, look, you're not required to understand. Just do it. <laughs> okay, this is what I need. Just do it. I'm not right. asking you. I'm not asking you to run a marathon. Um, I'm not asking you to uh, invest all your life savings into an, an internet company that I saw. Uh, you know, uh, into a stock that I uh, think would make us a lot of money. Right. I'm asking you to just be quiet. Right. And I I can see that, but I also feel like an understanding is necessary. Uh, on the outside point of view because it will help them to understand a little bit better and see things from your point of view if they have a better working knowledge of what it is that affects you to begin with and like yeah said, and I agree triggers. I agree with that but sometimes people are just stubborn yes yeah and yes. they they're just like you know what I don't get it I don't get it yeah and I'm like okay I, you fine you don't get it fine but I still need you to do this. Yeah. Okay. See, I'm a person you know, that needs understanding. I need some kind of... It doesn't even have to make sense to me. I just want to know why or what. Like, if something's bothering you, why does that bother you? And if you don't know why it bothers you, can you at least tell me what about it bothers you? Is and it if they can't the do, And if they can't do that, you've asked your questions. Time to stop talking. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the time where my anxiety kicks in and I go away. Yeah. I leave. I leave the whole that's situation. Fine. Because He's like, that's good. fine, too. Until... That's a valid solution. <laughs> it, 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 it's like, okay, uh, let me tell you guys a joke. This woman goes to the doctor and says, doctor, when my husband and I argue, he gets really, really mad. What can I do about it? Because I don't want him to get this upset. I'm worried he might have a heart attack. He... You know, it could have an aneurysm. He goes, what do I do about it? You know? And the doctor says, it's when he starts to get this way, start drinking a glass of water very seductively. And she's like, okay. She's kind of confused by it. So anyway, goes home that night. Argument ensues. She starts doing the thing with the water. He calms down. Happens a couple more times. She does it again. He calms oh, down. Oh, I know this joke. <laughs> so then he goes, so she goes back to the doctor. Says, doctor, it worked. And I need to know, what is the trick with the water? And he goes, it's got nothing to do with the water. The fact that you stopped talking, that's what uh, calmed him down. <laughs> I knew where that was going, too. I, I heard that one. That was good. Sometimes that's what we need, though. Sometimes it helps to talk. And, it's and sometimes necessary. it helps to shut the fuck up. Exactly. <laughs> it, 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 there's no textbook way to deal with everybody on the same, in the same manner. No, you know? no. And so for some people, yeah. <clears throat> you know what? Just shut the fuck up and get away from me. Yeah. And then this... other days it's like, you know what? This is what's bugging me. I hope you understand it. And I'm going to try and work my way towards being able to work through that. But it will take, you know, it's, another it's, help. It goes both ways. It well. goes both ways. You have exactly. to, like, if somebody's sitting there going, going, hey, uh, this is how, this is how I'm feeling. And I'm realizing uh, this. So I need to try to do this differently. But at the same time, this is what I need you to do. And if that person is unwilling to do that, right? Uh -huh. Yep. Then there's no. Then it there, there's no solution. This, no. It, it's, it's out the window. You're a stalemate. 
You're at a if they just, and someone's going to get hurt. Yeah, and if they just have the stubbornness of, well, I don't care. I need to know. I want to know now. I need this to be this way. I have to. I ha- it has to. You know. And you know, sometimes I, she gets I, like that. I do. Sometimes Good. she gets like that. She'll get in a mood, and I'll, I'll. I know she's irritated. I know she's in a bad mood, and I'll come around and I'll be like, "Are you okay?" Hmm. What's wrong? Nothing. You're, you're lying oh, wait, to me. First of all, first of all, anytime you ask a woman what's wrong and she says nothing, you're in trouble. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> With me, nothing is the green. You're safe. Right now, you're safe. If I say I'm fine, that is my nice way of saying right now I am fucked up, insecure, neurotic, neurotic and, and emotional. And emotional. Yeah, that's what fine away. stands for. Yes. I'm fine means I still need time to process. Exactly. I'm fine. And There's I'm nothing okay wrong. is the actual. I don't know what I want to eat. I'm okay. You know, I mean. But yeah. I mean, and, and the same is, is true in opposite, you know, as well in reverse. Some days I will have a bad attitude and she will notice that. She'll pick up on that. And she will, like she said, she's one of those people that has to know. So it's, are you okay? I wish there was something I could do to make this better. Or And it's like, half of the time I'm like, thank you, honey, I appreciate you. And then the other half of the time's like, don't fucking touch me. <laughs> no, don't even fucking come close to me. And that's, that's where there are three things that you need to maintain a really healthy relationship. And it doesn't matter if it's with another person in a romantic way, or a friendship, or a family member, or even with your own kids. Right. You need an understanding between the two of you. You need two people to be willing to give and take, and you need to have that, that potential for compromise. Mm. Because if you both stay at opposite ends and no one tries to meet in the middle, nothing's ever going to get better. Yeah, nothing's going to get resolved that way. And too much give and too much take from either side sets off an imbalance that just ends in a crash. Right. Yep. It's just a total car wreck after that. But um, Yeah, and it's uh it's it's unfortunate that that happens sometimes. Yeah. But sometimes that's just that's just what happens. Yeah. Oh, that's what you need um, in order to learn. And it sometimes those dark moments are the real eye openers. Those are the real motivating times when you're reflecting on those not during but afterwards when you're reflecting Mm -hmm. on how you felt and what you did it really shows you okay I could have done this way differently if I had just done it like this instead of like that this probably could have killed the entire issue without a, a problem but you don't think about those things in the moment you know not a lot not a lot of people do I don't Um, And that's something I'm trying to change about myself is to realize before I get to that point that, hey, look, you're encroaching on dangerous waters here. You may want to tread lightly. You know, you may want to think about what you have to say or what you're going to do next before you do it. Because, you know, the reaction or the uh, result of your action could be very unwanted. Mm -hmm. Very unwanted. That's very true. But, um, yeah, so coping mechanisms for you, Pixie, what do you use other than, like, I <coughs> you statements and stuff? Well, the I statements have been a massive help. Mm-hmm. That is that is one of the biggest things that I've learned over the last lifetime. <laughs> um, being able to walk away is a big one. It's a big coping mechanism that's taken me a long time to be able to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Seeking out the appropriate help, finally. Finding a therapist that vibed with me Mm -hmm. and was able to help me put words to everything I knew was wrong but didn't know know what was wrong. Like my ADHD. It goes extremely underdiagnosed in girls because girls tend to have the attention span 
or tend to not have the attention span, but they also don't have a lot of the hyperactivity that a lot of the boys do that is the namesake of ADHD. So for me, mm-hmm. it was undiagnosed for a long time. I didn't, right. I didn't know there was a problem because I just thought I was stupid. I thought I, I just couldn't pay attention. I couldn't retain the information. I didn't know there was an actual thing that was creating it. Right. So getting the right help, getting the right medication with, with the right prescriber, and being able to work through that with that therapist for a little bit. I mean, I was only in therapy for a year, but that year of therapy set me up for a lot of success afterwards. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> therapy is a great way to learn the tools and mechanisms that that we can employ um i learned a lot of mine from like day programs i went to a lot of day programs and um the last one i went to was a dual diagnosis program it was substance abuse but it was also mental health you didn't have to have both just one or the other and um mine was mental health issues so they did a lot of like group program stuff there and we would do you know like talking about how we can change our lives by paying attention to the little things. And another big thing that I learned while I was at these day programs, and it's a huge coping mechanism, is communication, like we've already said. Communication is huge. Talking about your problems with somebody really, really helps. And it helps even more when you're talking to somebody about your problems that deals with those same exact problems on a day-to-day basis. That's something that I learned. I had a big problem when I would talk to friends about, you know, what's going on with me. And they'd be like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I understand how you feel. And I'm like, no, you don't. Because you don't deal with this on a daily basis. I deal with this well, on sometimes, a daily basis. Well, sometimes that's what people say. They just, they don't know what else to say. Exactly. You know, so they're just, you exactly. know, somehow it gets brought up. You know, they could ask you, how you doing? And you'll be like, ah, eh, you know, okay. Right. Boy, was something wrong? And then they could lead to you to having a conversation about what's going on with you mm-hmm. that that particular day, and uh, then they're just like, "Yeah, I understand how you feel. You know, I hope you do. You know, right. and you're like you said, no, you don't understand because you're not in my head, right? And especially when it comes to like I said earlier about different personalities, mm-hmm. you know, and different ways of looking at life. Yeah, you can't, uh, you know. So no, you, most of the time when people say, "I know how you feel." No, they no, they really don't. They don't know how you feel at that. But they may have a general understanding, but they don't know the details of how you were feeling right. specifically. And that's that's where I was going with the the day program. That was something that I learned uh, right off the bat was that talking with other people that dealt with those issues on a day to day basis really made me feel a whole lot better because I'm talking to somebody that I know understands what these disorders are like. And that go through these these same symptoms mm. on a daily basis. You know what I mean? Having that that ability to um, relate relate to somebody else is just it's so important. It makes you feel like you're not alone anymore. Exactly, <clears throat> because yeah. that's exactly that's, what that's, it does. That's what bipolar does. It makes you feel alone. Like, it's and that, that's something I think we need to emphasize to our audience is that. You know, you're not if you're going through these things, you're not alone. As much as you might feel like you're alone, exactly, you're not alone. And in, in, in the era of social media, um, and uh, just the internet in general, there is so many different outlets that you can reach out to. Yes, you know, and so there are people that, that will will you know, they'll just listen. They won't even give you advice. They you just here I vent. No, or there, are, there are actually websites dedicated to that. I actually used to yeah. be what they called a counselor on one. It's called sevencupsoftea.com. And all we were there for, we, we had went through training and everything. All we were there for was to bounce questions back at people and to give them resources. We weren't there to give any actual advice. Yeah. We were there to help them talk themselves through situations. Right. And give them yeah, the you need someone there with some help. empathy that'll just be like, okay, you know, you're... Yes. <clears throat> well, I get how that could bother you. I, I get how that could be troublesome. 
Well, if you're in the, you know, the Phoenix, Arizona area, there are three different places I could recommend if you wanted to look into it tomorrow to give you someone to talk about this more in depth. So it was more like a suicide prevention hotline. It, it very similar, but it could do with anything. I okay. mean, without disclosing too many details, I dealt yeah, with teenagers whose parents were extremely unaccepting and abusive. Hmm. I dealt with mothers who were having postpartum depression. Um, I dealt with one fellow in particular that was minutes away from getting ready to take his own life and he was literally that desperate to find someone somewhere to listen to him and it was because of medical issues that were out of his control mm. and it it was really eye opening when it comes to how I deal with other people and how much I hold inside my issue came into the fact that I held too much to myself mm. And it set off my anxiety even worse. So much what are we doing on time right now? What's that? How are we doing on time? We got seven minutes. Seven minutes. All right. Cool. Yeah, one of the biggest things for helping me, I've noticed, and I forgot to mention it when you asked, is finding an outlet. And that can be any outlet. You don't have to be good at it. It doesn't have to be expensive. One of mine is writing. And it doesn't matter what I write. It doesn't matter if it's poetry or a journal entry or literally just me sitting there writing the same word over and over and over again. It The sound of pen on paper and the feel of a good pen on a page is cathartic to me. It lets my brain stop long enough to process whatever I need to process. Right. For some people, it's art or video games or like Matt, you were saying, building. When you sit down yeah. and you build and set up a new setup, it, it's that space out cathartic. It lets your brain kind of go through its back. It, it, hel it helps you vo focus on something else. Yes. You're focusing on something else and, and yeah, keeping your brain occupied. So you're not distract you. So you're not constantly thinking about something that is driving you crazy right. and, uh, and especially overthinking it. You know, to the point of it's just now you're just being absurd. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And you don't want to overthink things either because that's a good way to put yourself into a deeper hole. Um, like I did, yeah. like I did over the, the past weekend uh, up until Sunday. I was so nervous about, you know, meeting my sister for the first time that I was second guessing myself. Maybe I should just call it off. And no, I was just overthinking it is what I was doing. And yeah. I was hyping myself up for something that was never going to happen in the first place. So, you know, it, it does. Overthinking it can really drag you down. Um, I'm just, uh, it, it's just been a roller coaster for me personally these past few weeks. Matt, uh, you know, you've talked a lot about your own personal um dilemmas that you've gone through through life and pixie you've done the same um you know i, I think tip, we of all, the, tip of the iceberg brother <laughs> yeah pretty much i mean we could like i said we could talk about this for hours you know yeah. um this is just the tip of the iceberg and i'm sure we will have other uh episodes dedicated to um other issues like this as well but um i think it's especially important that we covered this topic where we are this was the final week a year ago that we were living a normal life mm -hmm. next week starts the close down and the start of the pandemic it will have been one full year mm. and that's for sure. a lot of people mental health is suffering right now oh yeah covid depression is a real <clears throat> real thing um and i can oh. totally understand that but uh, yeah, we are running down on time, guys. Thank you so much for a uh, awesome show again. This was very informative and uh, educated. I, I believe this went very, very well. So sure. thank you, Matt, and thank you, Pixie, for all of your input uh, and all the, the questions that you guys have wrestled around in my head. But uh, Matt, how's your training going this coming week? 
Well, I'm in week six of uh, week uh, in week six, and then week four of keto. Uh, week six of training. Um, uh, these last couple of days have been just awesome. I have been really my I'm starting to get my energy back. Um, you know, so I know I'm in full on ketosis. Um, I am train. I, you know, it's not like certainly not like the old days, but it sometimes feels like it because I'm doing a lot of reps. Like mm-hmm. I'll go, uh, like, uh, for example, bicep curls, I'll do, uh, you know, a, uh, you know, like say 80 pounds, um, 15 reps, then I'll drop down to 65 and I'll do another 12 reps then I'll drop down to, to, uh, 50 and I'll keep doing them till I fail. Yeah. You know? And so that's the, that's starting to happen now to where I can train, a little harder not so much heavy but uh train harder and really put that burn in that's fantastic in pump. I, I i was walking around i i felt like uh you know like a, a greek god today like when i got done training because yeah it felt like i the, the the pumping the you get the pump you know because <laughs> i was i was just so blown up and just so so rock hard and there was so much you know air going through my muscles and fucking swole, and you know bro. swole <laughs> so yeah, training training's going good. Uh, we're gonna get uh, Thursday. Uh, you know, I'm training in the morning, and we're gonna do measurements again, uh, weigh in and measurements again to see where things are. Of course, two weeks ago, um, there was uh, two almost three weeks ago. There was uh, we did the measurements and the weight, and uh, I had lost 16 pounds and shed seven percent body fat. So nice. we'll see where it is now. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see you can see uh, my uh, video diaries and uh, little little uh, music vids of my workouts on TikTok, Instagram, you know, at Matt Sinister. Um, you can go to my YouTube channel, um, you know, Matt Sinister's YouTube, and uh, you'll find uh, some of my old wrestling matches from the ninety from the late nineties, early two thousands. You'll find my uh, the the first Juice Fast I ever did. Um, I did a weekly video diary on that because I did it for 30 days. Uh, some fun vape mail videos, and then eventually I'm going to put the stuff you're seeing on TikTok and Instagram. I'm going to there's other footage, and I'm going to put that together into a little uh, little documentary style. I'm really not even sure how I'm going to do it, what I'm going to do, but I know I'm going to do it. Awesome. I can't wait to see some more stuff. And uh, I've been and I'm, I'm heading to Vegas. I'm heading heading to Vegas uh, this Thursday uh, to uh, um, with my uh, family and close friends, family friends. We're going to be saying goodbye to my dad, who of course passed away in November, mm-hmm. and having a celebration of life. And his ashes are going to be scattered. And uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good time, and I'm looking forward to it. But I will. And I will, and I'm saying this publicly, stick to the keto while I'm out there. I mean, it doesn't matter what people are eating around me. It doesn't matter what where I'm wind up at. I will figure it out, and I will get it done. There you go. That's the mentality you need, bro. You got this. I have faith in you. It's super good that you've had the practice over the last four weeks of altering everything so that mm-hmm. <clears throat> you don't. It seems like you've hit the point where you don't have to overthink it or try to think about it. It's, all right, I know I can uh, and I know I can't, so I can make this work. <laughs> I was doing that in the beginning because I was trying to get everything perfectly balanced. You know, your macros are supposed to be 70% fat, 25% protein, 5% carbs. And there were days that I'd have like 67% fat and 6% carbs. So, you know, and I was making myself mental trying to get this now i don't do that anymore now i'm just like uh okay that's not that big a deal yeah. you know now if, now if it's 15 percent carbs like. that's a big deal yep but but six seven percent no it's not it's not that too big a deal especially yeah. when you're keeping your calories under control yeah pixie how about you what uh what you got coming up this week anything special absolutely nothing <laughs> um actually I contacted a local shop recently that is a head shop and vape shop. And while vaping may be under fire, head shops are not. 
So I'm going to be meeting up with them at some point this week about possible consignment of some of my resin rolling trays and grinders. Hell yeah. Which, awesome. That's kind of exciting. Hell yeah. Um, but beyond that, absolutely nothing. Yeah. All right. Well, me, How about you, Karis? Nothing. Uh, I've got more work to do on myself. So um, as a lot of you tuners, insers, yeah, you listeners out there, uh, a lot of you <laughs> listeners, tunes or insers, yeah, a lot of you listeners out there. Did, did uh, you just create a new word? I did. Tunes or insers. That's a criticism. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a criticism. That's a, a like a Confucius say, but Chris say. Um, yeah. Anyways, Confucius says, Confucius say Chris confused. Yes, um. Chris confused. <laughs> Very confused. Um, yeah, for all the listeners out there, uh, you know, I've still got a lot of my. Uh, my demons to battle, but we're going to be working right. on that. And as you also know, we've stopped doing the live streams and video content coming out on the YouTube channel uh, for this reason, so that I can focus as much of my attention onto my personal growth uh, path that I'm on. Um, and I need as much time that I can dedicate to that as well. So, um, these podcasts, I've already got the time set away every week for these, so that's a non-issue. We are going to continue rolling out the podcasts, and uh, yeah, so soon, Matt, I guess we're going to be ready to have some guests on, and uh, that'll be something very, very special for the people to tune into. Hell yes. Absolutely. So anyways, guys, that's going to wrap it up for us today here at the Cloudy Days Calm Nights podcast. I'm Lethal Coils. You guys can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, and maybe sometimes on Twitter. Not a lot. But uh, you yeah, guys I'm not on a lot of Twitter either. Huh? What's that? I said I'm not on Twitter a lot either because Twitter is just. It's depressing. Gets your butt bl- bl- yeah, it's depressing, but it can get you manic sometimes too. We're just like. Argh. Yeah, yeah, it totally can. And it's not going to do any good. Uh, uh, um, sending a private message to a senator telling him to fuck off. You know, it's not good. <laughs> no, no, that know. doesn't that, help. That would make me feel pretty good. It'll yeah, make me feel better, it but it's not going to your situation. <laughs> you know, no. You know, yeah, you know how many times I've wanted to? I mean, even recently, I've wanted to like uh, uh, send a private message to Cuomo. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, are you a sex offend? Are you a sexual predator? Technically, yes, but so what, right? Right. Um, <laughs> how many t- how many messages do you think he really gets with the but so what in the message? Oh my God, that that's the one thing. That if he does, if he gets t- if he gets removed from office, or if he does, he's not he doesn't run again, that's the one thing I'm gonna miss because that was gonna be his whoever ran against him was gonna have that so what just <laughs> so much in there. Oh my God, it the so been what campaign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways. That's going to wrap it up for us, guys. Matt, Pixie, thank you guys so very, very much for another awesome show this week. I uh, I hope you guys both have the greatest of weeks, and I will see you both right here, same time, same channel. And you guys out there in YouTube and Spotify land, thank you guys so very much for tuning in. You guys can look forward to another awesome episode of the Cloudy Days Calm Nights podcast next week. But until then, peace. Later. Later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.